Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing a subscriber recommended video and a few of you actually suggested this, how to transition cuttings indoors. So if you watch this channel, you already know I did a video on how to take plants, so house plants or full plants indoors for the winter and that would include soil so this is where things are changed just a little bit and that department of change is actually in cuttings so with cuttings we have obviously the need for roots eventually we need to reduce the stress on the plant so we can actually get the roots without losing the leaves the pests change as well because we're not dealing with soil and in some cases not all plants will root meaning we have to be selective in which ones we choose so behind me here is a great example of some plants that don't overwinter very well indoors but it really doesn't matter too much we can simply just restart these by seed inside if we really want kale or swiss char now the same thing goes with lettuce or any other monocot plant that is leafy and doesn't have a main stem the reason for this is because it's very difficult to actually get roots off this plant and the hassle isn't always worth it. So starting these from in seed indoors is probably your better bet. Now there are plants out there that break the barriers with this. Um, for example, a lot of herbs such as basil, rosemary, such as this one here, or mint. And the best way to be able to tell whether or not a plant can be have a cutting taken from it is if it has a main stem and on that main stem, it has nodes. And so what you want to do is you want to take a cutting and then you simply want to remove the leaves from the cutting and leave just the bare nodes exposed. When we have just the bare nodes, these are where our roots are going to come from. So what we're looking for, main stem with leaves or shoots coming off of that main stem, which means we can get roots from the node. Reason why we can get roots from the nodes is because there's something fancy called meristematic stem cell tissue in those areas. This is undifferentiated cell tissue, and that means it hasn't decided what its role is yet. So every node contains cells that can become a root, a branch, or a leaf. And so when we remove the leaves from the side we place those nodes in water we trigger the life cycle we trigger those undifferentiated cells and we tell them hey by the way your new function isn't capturing photosynthesis it's actually making roots based on your environment so that is why we remove those so herbs such as basil rosemary anything with the stem will work fine things as such as parsley will not so now let's go look at some coleus and how we would overwinter that and the same thing for that side is going to apply to things such as hydrangeas so behind me here we have another example of a great plant that can be easily overwintered and this here is a coleus so coleus is another example of a plant that we can very easily take cuttings from now if you've allowed your coleus to set seeds such as this big bush i have here behind me it can get a little bit difficult and you may not always get root action because the life cycle of the plant has dynamically changed once we have flowers. However, if you're able to find a stem that doesn't necessarily have flowers, then you would be able to take these and use these as cuttings. If you are on top of these and you're deadheading them all the time, you won't have the flower stems popping up. And this kind of goes for the herbs as well, especially basil, if you allow it to flower you're really going to limit, damage your potential to be able to get cuttings from it. Now, you can still try. Sometimes it's not too late. So for example, some of these ones at the back that are showing up some flowers, but not all the flowers have been spent or that it's just beginning to flower. These are an awesome choice, but you still want to try to find those stems that do not have flowers on them. So once we find it, um, for example, let's just go through here and see what I can find. So here I have a coleus plant. And as you can see, the buds on the actual flower are 
pretty small still and they actually haven't opened, meaning it hasn't completed its life cycle. So we're going to remove the flowers from the actual stem. Now, this is pretty big. It's actually relatively leggy because it was in a pretty shady spot. However, when we look at this stem, we can notice that we really only have two nodes. We have a node here at the bottom. So a node again is where the two leaves meet or the stem meets. And then we have a node up here. This node up here is going to be our photosynthesis end because we always want to place this in water so that the stem that was going downwards is still going downwards. What we want to do now is we want to remove the side branches. So take these off. You can try to get roots off of these. However, it's very rare that you would get roots and a stem. So you're probably always just going to have one leaf with roots coming off of it. You commonly see this with fiddle leaf figs and stuff as well. People will say, this is how you do it. Not always. So you do want the leaves on top and you want the leaf on the bottom. So you need at least two nodes per cutting. And then you have this big, long shaft. And this is all going to rot unless you remove it. So you actually want to remove it relatively close to the bottom of that node and pop it off. Now what you can do is you can place this on your counter and allow it to dry out just a little bit and scab over. Once that has finished or completed, you can pop it in water. For some plants, um, especially these greener type plants, ones that aren't as woody, you can pop them right into the water. But if you notice a black or a sludge developing on that plant, then you do want to actually remove it from the water clean it off, rinse it off, and put it back in. If you're noticing sludge or buildup um, over and over again, it may be time to consider taking it out and letting it scab over just a little bit, even if it's just for a half an hour, pouring some cinnamon on there and then popping that back into that water. So we're back inside and we know the basics of how to transfer these plants from outdoors to inside through cuttings. Now, remember the main functions we're looking for is a, some sort of a stem with leaves coming off of it. If there's no main stem, this is a plant that you may want to just start indoors and that could fall under the bracket of things such as lettuce. Now, if you're wondering whether or not it can be started by cutting, please let a comment down below as to what plant you're referring to and I will let you know whether or not this is possible. Most trees, uh, hydrangea bushes, all can be done through cuttings coleus, a lot of herbs can be done through cuttings as well. So just to show you what this is going to look like and a few different options you can go with when it comes to starting cuttings. These guys are the tomatoes that I took out from the experiment we did with the tomato topping, the video I did on how to get bigger tomatoes before the frost hits. And so in that video, I took some cutting toppings and I started them in some water. So as you guys can see, I've got some pretty wicked roots on here. And again, these were just started in water. I actually have tomatoes on the plants. Now tomatoes are pretty hardy plants and they do okay regardless of having flowers or having fruit. And so these guys probably will be all right considering how large those roots are already. They're probably ready to be planted up in actual soil. However, if you are worried about a plant or you really want to make sure that plant works out, then I suggest doing something more similar to what we did with the coleus here. So actually physically removing the flowers and only leaving one or two leaves on top and popping that into the water. So anyone who's done transplanting knows that when you transplant, there can be some transplant shock, especially when we're moving from water to soil. So when you transition, you want to make sure you place your roots in nice, moist soil, borderline anaerobic for at least the first day. This is going to help reduce the shock. The outside of the root, so the apical um, point on the root is pretty hardy and it has a tough exterior when it's had to work its way through soil. If you started your cuttings in water, your apical tip isn't going to be nearly as strong and it's going to actually be kind of weak and like a baby hand because it hasn't ever had to fight with the soil before. So when we do cuttings um, for that, 
We do need to be careful because if we damage the roots, it's very, very easy to do because there is no callus. So we need to develop that callus over time. So the best way to transition is with lots and lots of moisture at the end of an initial day or two, and then start introducing it to more regular soil cultures, I guess you could say. I'm gonna show you one example of what you can do if this is a plant that you absolutely need to take root, then there is a better method. However, it's gonna cost you, you know, a bit of money because it is LECA. It's very, very inexpensive. I mean, this stuff is like $5 a bag type thing. And I did a whole video on LECA, but I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Okay, so we're standing on my couch right now, so sorry for the wobbly camera, but this is what LECA looks like. So it is these tiny little ball type things. It is lightweight expandable clay, that's a very fancy name for it. And these will help toughen up that uh, outer root system. Meaning when we put our plants or our cuttings into this, we can transition to the soil much easier and we won't end up with shock, which if you're doing like a hydrangea or your grandmother's rose bush, this may be the better method. Okay, so we transitioned them inside, we've taken our cuttings, we've placed them in water, or we've chosen to place them in LECA based on how sacred or how well we want it to turn out, our budget, et cetera, and so forth. Now, our biggest second issue is going to be the pests. So because these were outdoors, they were exposed to all the pests that are outdoors as well, and that includes their babies and the adult forms. So. I did go over this a little bit in the house plant transitioning from outdoors to indoors. However, we don't have the soil in this scenario and we just have the water issue. So it is going to be slightly different. As well, we have taken a cutting. So we have really stressed that plant out. So we wanna limit the actual manipulation and potential blasting with water that I would typically recommend for a plant that has its roots and its soil. So when we have our cuttings, whether it be a tomato, a pepper, um, a coleus, a hydrangea, a rose, whatever the case is, what we want to do is we want to manually inspect underneath the leaf, on top of the leaf, along the stem, and in the actual node areas. And we want to remove any adult forms or visual eggs that we can see. So here we have a silver sword. And what I mean by that is we are going to go through the plant and we are going to check on that cutting from the stem. And we are actually going to physically move these leaves back so it's without breaking if we have um, a case like this we want to actually move the leaves back and take a look in there and make sure that there is no pests because we we need to take off as much stress as possible from there i would leave it so the reason why i say that is because you don't want to put too much pesticide even if it's natural on the plant the plant is very stressed out so you want to limit the stress that can be caused while the plant's trying to respire or photosynthesize, meaning it's stomata is opening up. You just wanna limit that stress as much as possible. And pesticides do cause some stress. So leave the plant on the windowsill in a nice bright area in the water or in the LECA. Segregate it from any house plants you may have or indoor uh, vegetables that you may have. And then just physically watch for pests. Watch for the adults and watch for the eggs. And so long as you don't see any, then you won't actually have to treat the plant. Now, if you are reusing soil, when you go to transplant the plant indoors, then of course you're gonna to have to treat that soil with the nematodes and all the other protocols that I have recommended in previous videos. But if you're using fresh soil, then you will be just fine. Well, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and a shout out to those of you that recommended this video because you asked for it in the comments. You wanted to know how to transition tomatoes, peppers, plants, back in George for the winter. And this can save you money because this means you don't have to technically buy seeds next year, especially if you can get some of these plants to overwinter and bring you into the new year. And then you'll have the biggest plants on the block by the time spring hits. Remember cuttings, the smaller, the better. You don't want huge cuttings. So two nodes, three max, and a couple leaves left on and you will be good to go. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.